All right, here I am, back to working on my uh, 15 horsepower outboard. Um, I've been kind of having a problem with uh, the choke solenoid. It's uh, held me up for a while. There's two types of setups for these. Well, three really, if you want to get into it. Um, first one, which is what this one's going to wind up being, is a cable-driven system, which is actually the newer system, so probably better. But what I was waiting to hopefully trying to find was a link version. Let me uh, show you the two. So as you can't really see, um, this engine, there is a spring link, or a little link that goes into there, and it activates the uh, the choke. I was hoping to find another one of these. Reason being, when you need to take it off, the carburetor or the choke, you don't need to cut the cable to get the thing off of there. That's ideally what I would have. Um, I couldn't find one, and I didn't really try to see about my metal working skills to try to bend all those links because I, I never would. So let me show you the uh, cable system. Here's a cable system type off of my other uh, spare power head. Um, it consists of now well, three parts. The cable, a little uh, cable liner thing here, and the end ball that you would crimp on to make it work. Um, let me show you those three parts. All right, here are the uh, parts I ordered. Uh, this was three dollars or so. Um, this old, old, old packaging contains our cable, and this tiny little part is our ball. <sighs> so, if you needed to get the carburetor off and/or the choke solenoid, you're cutting this cable, you're cutting this ball off, and ultimately the cable. That's still savable. So, if you need to get the carburetor off to rebuild it, you're replacing these two parts. That's why I didn't like this idea. Now, you could argue there is a way to get the ball off. I don't know what it is. If you do, please let me know. But I couldn't find the, uh, the link, so this is what I have to do. Well, let's just hope this uh, carburetor works out perfectly fine, because I don't want to have to buy another one of these setup of parts. Again, they're not, they're not much, but it's, it's still another cost. So, let's get that installed. Also, see, see what this is doing here? It's not very long. This thing... Kind of a little on the long side. You see what I mean? It's it's just too long. I don't know why they wouldn't sell it to size. This isn't some cut by the piece kind of thing. It's an actual part number or not sold by the foot. So that's that's odd that I got to cut it. If I do, mind you. There's no real instructions on this unless I can get in my time machine and go back to 19, I don't know, 86 buy the actual remote start kit and see what those instructions say but you know that, that's obviously ain't gonna happen um there are kits available on well there were on ebay none of them had the instructions so even even that aspects out of it all right well anyway so it's gonna be a little experiment on how to do this but i'll uh, i'll figure it out one way or another so what i'm going to attempt to do is get this cable through the hole in the bottom of the uh, choke arm here which turns out it's actually quite easy. Getting it back up, not so easy. So in theory, all that happens is it pulls it up for you. Don't know if I particularly trust this. I think I'm gonna have to be pretty exact on my cutting here and I pretty much get one shot at it. Those I could probably do it about there. Hope for the best. Let's uh, let's see if it'll stick on its own. Well, definitely went up on its own. Going down, not so much. So I'm gonna uh, guess how long our tube needs to be here. I'm gonna go probably a little longer than this one. It's not elastic, so it can't really work as a spring. That'd be nice. So let's uh, let's guess. I don't know, right about there. Yep. All right. Worst case, I can just cut more and put it back in there and take more off. So not too bad. And I have a bonus piece in case I ever blow this engine up or something. Oh. It seems like maybe I didn't need to cut it. I'm going to put my trim piece back in there and see what happens. 
It doesn't look too bad. With up. Seems like it's fully closed. And then down. Well, I guess that uh, tubing is kind of the right size. Well, it works for me. Like I said, I don't care. I cut it. I don't think anything really matters. I don't think it's ever going to fold in on itself. Crimping this? Yeah, that's... Uh, I got no idea on that one either. I was getting there with some... Uh, something and... Crimp her home and hope for the best. Let's see well we... Uh, you know those things here are going to work? Well, nothing so far. Looks like that did it. Well, let's uh, hook it up some power and see what happens. My theory, do this enough, it work itself clean and good again. Um, doesn't really seem like that's happening, so I'm going to take the solenoid apart here and give it a clean up. Really not that bad. Doesn't feel like it's uh, sticky or anything weird. Suppose I could put a small spring or something inside of there. May help push it back down. So I'm going to get some uh, steel wool or sandpaper or something inside of there, clean up that hole, uh, clean this up a little bit and see what happens. Well, both parts feel decently smooth. I put some more graphite in here because, you know, can't hurt it, right? I'm kind of wondering if it's supposed to go that way or not. It was originally like that. I don't necessarily know if I like that routing. Oh, whatever. It'll work. I'll figure it out later. I 
It looks good. All right. <clears throat> Let's grab my cable. I'll hook it up and see what happens. Oh, that's better. All right, well, if I were watching this, I'd say, well, why didn't you clean it before you put the thing back together? Well, I did, but that was, what, four or five months ago? So I'm going to add that to periodic maintenance. But looks like it's working now, so I'll move on to the rest of the thing. Now, now that I know it works, I'm going to trim this uh, leg down a bit. <clears throat> 